No portion of this program may be reproduced without the So the Marlins are pissed off again. Well, guess what? Who cares? Incorporated. Nobody cares, David. The biggest name. Jeffrey. The best talent. Goofball. You're listening to Sports Radio 560 WQAM. Uh-huh. From Miami for Lauderdale. Yeah. Well, I guess the audio vault isn't fixed. Not Maybe really it is low. fixed. 560 WQAM presents the Neil Rogers Show. To talk to Neil, dial 5670560 in Dade and Broward. In other counties, call toll-free 877-785-NEIL or pound 560 on your AT&T and Verizon wireless phones. The opinions expressed by Neil, his guests, or his callers do not represent those of WQAM management, staff, or sponsors. Now, the Neil Rogers Show on 560 WQAM. Have you been abused in the workplace, raped or screwed? Place your career in my silky smooth hands. Hello, this is Norma Kant for the lore orifices of uh, Norma Kant. If you need me to conduct business on your behalf, let me explore for you. It may take up to 13 months for me to explore, but I will explore for you. Call 1-800-THERE'S-SO-MANY-MEN-TO-EXPLORE. That's 1-800. Maybe I should not schedule syndication meetings for Christmas Day. If your cell phone does not work because you're in California, call 1-800-I-WANT-TO-KEEP-NEIL hostage to South Florida. Call now, and you will receive a free cell phone, one that works almost as good as mine. And a girl, Norma, you're the best. Phone. His name is Cesar. Yeah, I bet. 1002 at 560 WQM. Happy Monday to you. Boy, it sounds like we got some real crap going on, huh? Do we? Marlins and Joe Bell hate each other like poison, and David Sampson. Yeah, hey, David, guess what? Nobody cares about the freaking Marlins. How do you like that? And I don't care if all the... In fact, i got quite a story about that. We did it! In my pile. About uh, some of the yes votes or really no votes and stuff like that. I could move it up in the pile, but you know what? I don't want to do it. I don't want to. Because nobody really cares about the Marlins, just like nobody cares about the Panthers. It's a sports market that doesn't exist. It exists only in the minds of those people who, be- who want to believe that it is. But it, 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 it ain't. Like George. George is perfect for South Florida mm-hmm. because he doesn't give a crap. Only at least he's honest enough to tell you that. Right. A new Des Moines Register poll in Iowa shows Barack Obama would beat John McCain in the general election. 53 to 36 percent. He would kick McCain's old craggy Ooh. lying ass. However, McCain would beat Swillery 49 to 40. Do you get that? I got it. So she loses by 9, and uh, Barack wins by 17. So it's a 26 point swing there. Yeah. Ah, shame on you, Barack Obama. Shame on on you. You know, it's one thing to go down with class, it's another thing to, like, uh, go out with the town like a fool, like she's doing. Mm -hmm. Like an absolute fool. But, uh, you know, par for the course. Okay, let's take a look at the. Poll, well, let's see, we had two polls, right? We had the one from Friday. And then as I threatened, I changed it over the weekend. What restaurant chain has the best desserts? Boy, that poll uh, left me limp. 1,552 votes, so a lot of votes. The one today leaves them limp because mostly they're going and they don't understand what it means. What restaurant chain has the best desserts? I don't eat dessert, 573. Why not? I don't want to. Okay. Cheesecake Factory 520. You know something? I just, I'm ready to lay down on the floor and pass out. I can't deal with it. How can that be? I don't eat pot 100. Denny's 68. Steak and Shake 52. Friday's 45. Grand Lux Cafe 43, which is a thousand times better than the Cheesecake Factory, by the way, but nevertheless. Oh, no, you're wrong, Neil. What do you know? Your taste is in your tuchels. Chili's 32, Applebee's. About 30, man. Ruby Tuesday's 23, Longhorn Steakhouse 20, Big Boy 16, Roadhouse Grill 16, and Bennigan's Solamente 14, only 14 for Bennigan's, which I haven't been to a Bennigan's since before Abraham was a baby. Have you? You've been to Bennigan's lately? Not in a long time. 
Don't even see them around, especially here. They're around. There's nothing wrong with them. Didn't have no, they're problem, fine. They're okay. I just, you know, didn't get around to it. They're a lot bigger in Tampa. I don't know what it is, but remember that week that we were in Tampa doing those shows, those yep. awful shows? I think I ate at Bennigan's a couple of times. I could be wrong, but then what again do I know? Here's the new poll, which we've done before a long time ago. In fact, it was so long ago, I couldn't even find the original one, which might have had a lot better choices on it, but I think this one's okay. Which of these is most for Goyam? More than any of the other. 481 votes so far. We're not going to get a 1,000. That's because Josh Cordes is with us today. Chris Whalen is taking the day off today. All right. And Josh Cordes is with us, but only until noon because he's got bigger fish to fry. He's got to go get his uh, taxes done. So, you know, this is the way it works at QAM. That's well, right. I'll come in for a couple hours, but i got to go. Uh, i got a hot date at noon. i got to go uh, get my taxes done. i got to get a haircut at 1.30. Right. Right. Or just, I don't want to. Yeah, that's it. That's basically the way it works here at QM. It's kind of like laissez-faire. Comme si, comme ça. Menza, menza. Women's a women's a. I don't know. It sucks. So then we got some stranger coming in at uh, noon. Greg? Who runs the board for the morning show? To us, he is a stranger. I have no That's idea right. who this Greg is. Which of these is most for Goyim? Jesus 184, strictly for Goyim. In fact, that's what the poll really should say. Which of these is strictly for Goyim? That's the way we worded it the first time. Because they don't understand. That's bad wording on my part. Sorry, Eric. Maybe Eric can change it, you think? He can. Which of these is strictly for Goyim? Jesus, 184. Foreskin, 83. Biscuits and gravy, 75. Spam, 51. Oh, God. Meat in a can. Oh. Ham sandwich, 36. Pork and beans, 35. And, and let me ask you this. Where is the pork in the can of pork and beans? You know that wad of fat that you find sometimes that makes you gag and uh, vomit if you find it? Oh, that's it? That, there it is. That's the pork? That it is. Oh, my pork God. Pork fat, baby. 35 for pork and beans. My Huckabee, 22, and lentil soup, 6 out of 492. Our goal today is 500. Don't, oh, 497, look at that. Don't push too hard on that, uh, which is strictly for going. So there you go on that. Very suspicious, strange things going on. CBS's 60 Minutes broadcast yesterday regarding the alleged political prosecution of Democratic Alabama Governor Don Siegelman went dark in the northern third of Alabama last night. According to WHNT-TV, the local CBS affiliate, the issue was caused by a technical malfunction. What's that got to do with the NFL Combine, Neil? It's the Combine. Oh, and the big O is there again, like he is every year. Oh. All of the uh, maybe I'm getting old, you know. Well, I am old. Oh, you are. Don't forget Friday's our 32nd anniversary show. I'm sure they're going to be like party favors and balloons and big uh, oh, yeah. anniversary cake. Strippers, clowns. Oh yeah. Speaking of cake, we ought to get on uh, one of those movies that we haven't heard in a long time. Oh no, so they're going to shoot Sonny in the causeway. Maybe they, it looks like they already did. No. There he is. Hey, Sonny. They hit him with a hundred shots and he's still dead. We apologize that you missed the first segment of 60 Minutes tonight. featured a report titled, The Prosecution of Don Siegelman, a WHNT story said. CBS News, which owns 60 Minutes, however, denied there was any problem on their end. Scott Horton of Harper's Magazine reported late last night that CBS was directly pointing back at the local outlets as the cause of the problem. I contacted CBS News in New York and was told there is no delicate way to put this. The WHNT claim is not true. There were no transmission to Fugalese. The problems were peculiar to Channel 19, which had the signal and had functioning transmitters. I was told that the decision to blacken screens all across northern Alabama could only have been an editorial call. Only the Siegelman section of the program went dark. WHNT claimed they lost the transmission. Right. How do you like that? Sign America, baby. It's getting worse by the minute. It's just it's unacceptable is what it is. Zion America, everything mm -hmm. is censorship. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing, since AMC is like Godfather obsessive all weekend and it's on again right now, yeah. we were noticing before the show today, they, they leaked oh. out all kinds of crap. But when uh, Sonny says, I hope my brother don't come out with just his uh, in his hands. stick. Yeah, they left that in there. No, they said stick. They did? Yeah. I groaned. Oh. 
Well, that's that sucks. Yeah, it does. Although I noticed they left the N word in there. Yeah, that's right. Go the figure. N word was in there, no problem. Yeah, the figure. ends are having a good time, uh, you know, doing this, doing that. News Channel 19 lost our program feed from CBS. Upon investigation, WHNT has learned that the CBS receiver that allows us to receive programming from CBS failed. WHNT engineers responded as quickly as possible to restore the feed at 6.12 p.m. A total and flagrant and blatant lie. Our sincere apologies to our viewers across the Tennessee Valley, the local affiliate added. The network said they would re-air the broadcast during the newscast at 10 o'clock last night. Whether this occurred couldn't be confirmed. The White House has put pressure on CBS to kill the show. Those close to the case say journalists covering the story have been attacked. The case's most prominent whistleblower, Dana Jill Simpson, recently testified under oath to Congress about Rove's involvement in politicizing the Bush Justice Department. Her house mysteriously caught fire after she came forward. Just a coincidence, don't you think, that her house mysteriously caught fire? Right. WHNT in Huntsville, Alabama, was purchased by Oak Hill Capital Partners from the New York Times early last year. Oak Hill is owned by the Bass Brothers, Bush fundraisers at the pioneer level. In other words, they raised over 100 grand for the Bush-Cheney campaigns in both 2000 and 2004. Lee Bass is best known member of the Bass family for his role in George W. Bush's failed energy venture called Spectrum 7, and later for his bailing out of Harkin Energy. How do you like this crap, man? Censorship is running rampant in Zion America. What's the public worried about? They're worried about, oh, who won the Oscars last night? Well, guess what? I didn't watch it, and I don't care who won it. And you know why? I don't know why. Why should I watch it when I didn't see any of the movies? Right? Right. The Coen brothers won 8 million awards. Well, good. I've got to see that. Everyone says it's really good. What? The No Country for Old Men or whatever. Is that what it is? Yeah. I've heard nothing but good things about it. So. Really? Oh, well, we got 517 votes on. That's because Josh Cordes is here today for uh, Lumpy. Just bringing out the votes, man. Yeah, Lumpy last, uh, I don't know, last Monday he was supposed to have. Uh, tell me this fairy tale again, this Bubble Micey. Okay. okay. But what? Why no, he's not there today? Oh, well, I mean, you, you, you know, every employee here at the wonderful WQAM gets the option to be yeah, either, either off President's Day or Martin Luther the King Day. Exactly. Yes. And he didn't get off either, apparently. Uh, so, you know, Darrow gave him the day off today. Daryl gave him the day off today? Right. In other words, he didn't demand it or ask for it. He just said, oh, take the day off. I'm sure. Is that what yeah. you're telling me? It was Is that what you're starting to stir up trouble? That's what I was told also. Right. What? That he was offered the day off and he took it. I'm not going to say a thing, okay? I've got enough other things going on, enough issues. I'm not saying a word. I... Week after week, more and more people taking advantage of Neil's half-price deals on WQN.com. And now it's time for another great restaurant offer this Thursday... Starting Thursday at noon, you'll be able to buy $100 certificates for just 50 bucks to the Blue Moon Fish Company's Coral Spring Lo- Springs location. Uh-oh, bulletin from Inside Radio. Breaking news. Da, 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 da. Westwood One gets a $100 million invention. Who the hell cares? Buzz me back when there's something worthwhile, okay? Inside Radio, you should only croak. God, Westwood One, who cares? Bom 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 brand 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 Once there was a senator who was caught indulging a habit You fairy a boogaro not much different like a typical neocon faggot Hands up to Larry, we all thank you for giving writers something funny to do. <laughs> You're looking for guys who make you go, I, I, Larry Craig, thank you for tapping your shoe. Huh? New stories last a few days, but you refuse to go away. Republicans are primarily gay, gay, gay. Yay. Hands off to Larry, with treats of power. We all invite you to inhale our butt. The neocon rides like to insert and go, I, 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 I. Larry taking no crap when he's tapping his shoes. I never have been gay. Gay, gay, gay. I never have been gay. Hands 
Yeah, for those of you who haven't seen the uh, Godfather 400 times this weekend, shame on you, that's all I can tell you. Yeah. Over and over. Right. And the worst part of it is every time I find it on there, I keep watching it. Sure. Like right now. Let's watch it. I was watching it this morning. Well, there's Don Tomasino with that cane. Remember how he got shot in the leg when we were, when, uh, what's his name, when uh, Don Corleone was stabbing uh, Don, what was his right. name? Don uh, Chico, no, not Don Chico. Not Lucchese. No, get out of no, here. No, that no, was no, no. In the neck. That was Fabrizio with the glasses in the neck. Right. By the way, next time you want to kill somebody, that's a good scam. I never thought about it. I wrote that. it down. Always make sure you tell them though, to sharpen up the uh, earpiece on sure. one of the, uh, uh -huh. the glasses. Makes it a lot easier that way. Subito. Subito. Eh? Pronto. Now. Pronto. Che Isn't that interesting? Pronto is uh, like uh, two different things. Is when it? you answer the phone in Italian, pronto. Huh. And in Spanish, of course, pronto means subito. Now. Make right. it snappy. What is Fox News, asked comedian and activist Lee Camp on the air. It's just a parade of propaganda, isn't it? It's just a festival of ignorance. A million people are dead in Iraq. Come on, this is ridiculous. What's the point of this? This is insane, Camp continues. Go out, leave your home, go outside, go hug your children, love your family, you know, do something with your life. The Fox anchor and panelist quickly acted to drown out Camp's speech before handing the show off to another Fox anchor, flanked by four buxom women in makeshift Star Trek uniforms to promote a story about Captain Kirk's sex appeal. They wanted him off of there. Pronto. <laughs> Pronto, Tonto. It's coming with you? No, I want you to take it to a father's house, because I know things are safe. Okay, okay boss. Anything you say. Anything you say, boss. And then he hauls ass, man. That sure. hauls you. He hauls ass. I don't do that. Republican Party members in Puerto Rico awarded all 20 delegates at stake Sunday to Arizona Senator John McCain, who's still singing, man. Where is that? Bom, bom, bom. There it is. Bom, bom, bom. Bom, bom, bom. Bom, bom, bom. Bom, bom, bom. Who has vowed to help resolve Washington's complicated relationship with the U.S. Caribbean territory. The at-large delegates each will cast one vote at the Republican National Convention this summer. Three superdelegates who are not bound by Sunday's results have also pledged to back McCain. The delegates from Puerto Rico helped McCain move a close, a little bit closer. <coughs> Jane and the Americans were singing, come a little bit closer. To clinching the GOP nomination, giving him a total of 996 delegates, it'll take 1191 to secure the Republican nomination. He's got it, man. He's got it in his gland. Spot of the New York Times, all these stories. Lots of stories out there on the street, you know what I mean? All kinds of stories. Right. How come my picture just went blank? Oh, there it is. Oh, this must be the meeting of the five families. Yeah. I want to thank you for helping me organize this meeting here today. Oh, was that just regular cotton they used in his teacher? Was it cotton batten? Joseph Cotton. New York, Ross Batten. Jersey. Carmine Cooney, I'm from the Bronx. Carmine Cooney, Joseph Cotton. Joseph Cotton. Brooklyn. Philip Tatalia. Oh, Philip is combing. He's doing that comb over, man. He's combing that uh, six hairs back over his bald head. Philip Sataglia. Won't have to worry about him much longer. The Cuban National Assembly voted Raul Castro as its new president yesterday, the first time the country's had a new leader since his brother Fidel seized power in 1959, in spite of Hyman Roth. <coughs> Mr. Castro, the 76-year-old Armed Forces Minister, had been widely expected to be named president by the 614 members of the Assembly. Mr. Castro, dressed in a gray suit and steel-colored tie... Snappy dressers, man, those Cuban leaders, I'll tell you that right now. Not as snappy as I am, but close. Mr. Castro cast the first vote for President of the Assembly with a smile and a wave about 11.15 a.m. Fidel was said to be too sick to attend the meeting, and he voted through a proxy. He's too sick. He's dying over there. Quick. Mr. Tally agrees. 
And I'm willing to let things go on the way they were before. We are all grateful to Don Corleone for calling this meeting. We all know him as a man of his word. Richard Cotty, that's a Bogzini man. He was a good actor, Richard Cotty. There were a lot of good actors uh, besides the main, you know what I mean? Right. Like Sterling Hayden that played uh, McCloskey. Hey, Mar how's the uh, veal? I'm not really sure he got to taste the veal. It looked to me like he was taking the first bite of the veal. He had his salad in yeah. salat, and then, and then it got stuck to, in his throat. The veal was the veal. <laughs> The ballot contained 31 names for the top positions in the country, among them President, Minister of the Interior, Minister of the Exterior, and Minister of the Armed Forces. Minister of the Interior. What, what does that mean? The delegates have no choice because there's only one name for each position. The candidates were not immediately made public. During a recess, however, several delegates said they supported Raul Castro as the next president would have been surprised by any other result. Raul Castro, because he's had a career path that goes all the way back to the grandma, said one delegate. Teovaldo de la Paz Venega, a garbage collector, referring to the ship on which the Castro brothers arrived with their ragtag rebel force in the 1950s. He's got the confidence of the people. Hey, Raul. You fair. Right. The people have their faith, trust and faith in Raul. They're eating Raul. It's not like the old days. But we can do anything we want. A refusal is not the act of a friend. Mm. Don Corleone had all the judges and the politicians in New York. And he must share them. All about his youth. Must let us drink the water let from us the well. Draw the water from the well. Right. Certainly, he can present a bill for such service. After all, we're not communists. After all, we are not communists. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Am I good or what? Huh? Let's have a Godfather dialogue contest, man. Let's do it. Whoever whoever uh, screws up one line, right. bada bing, that's it. The we'll end do of the it all together. We'll go for points. Yeah. You put up three, four thousand dollar investment. Oh, we better watch it because yeah, I think we're going to that part of the movie where they say the N-word yeah. again. You know? yeah, yeah. Or did he say the coloreds? I think he said the coloreds in this uh, in, in that particular, movie. yes. Yeah. That was at the dinner table where uh, somebody said the ends are having a good time with mm -hmm. you or whatever. Mm -hmm. Don't be saying the ends no more, baby. In fact, everything now is censored. Right. And th this thing on AMC and all the cable channels, last night I was watching, and it gets to the point where Mo Green says, there, he's arguing with uh, Michael about uh, having to slap uh, his brother around, Fredo, blah, blah, blah. And he says he was banging cocktail waitresses two at a time. And in this in this version, they bleep out bang, and they, he was making cocktail waitresses two at a time. My God! Well, what, what is going on here? And the public is like, blah, 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 blah. no, nobody cares, you know? It's kind of like a douchebag like that. Like the biggest name. Everything is censored, baby. Dine America. The sports leader. The old guy. Yeah. Wow. When I'm on the campaign trail, it's my job to talk smack. I tell some wild stories to cut down Barack, and I won't let up until Hillary's won. So I'll hammer away, cause I'm Bad Bill Clinton, Bad Bill Clinton, Bad Bill Clinton, Bad Bill, Bad Bad Bill Clinton. And when I make a speech, people's eyes open wide, and Obama shrieks, cause he thinks that I've lied. Then I'll mess with me, baby, slinging mud is such fun, so go vote for my lady, cause I'm Bad Bill Clinton, Bad Bill Clinton, <laughs> Bad Bill Clinton. How long have you been back? Back a year. Longer than that, I think. It's good to see you, Kate. I'm working for my father now, Kate. He's been sick. Very sick. But you're not like him, Michael. I thought you weren't going to become a man like your father. That's what you told me. 
My father is no different than any other powerful man. Any man who's responsible for other people. Like a senator or a president. You know how naive you sound. Why? Senators and presidents don't have men killed. <laughs> oh. Who's being naive, Kay? There you go. That's the best line of the whole movie, I think, right well, there. I don't know. Well, I mean, it was but it part of the one. segment that I just put on the air. Oh, it's not as exciting as when the dog started barking there. 560 on the poll. Look at that. That's because Josh Cordes is with us for two hours today. Sweet. Took two hours out of his busy schedule. 564. Well, let's uh, move that frequency just a little bit, okay? We're probably a little off frequency anyway. We're a little off. Which of these is strictly for Goyim? Thank you, Eric. He changed the way it's worded. He is the best. He continues being the best fat um, uh, website. Uh, what would you call him? Uh, website guy? Sure, web website guy. guy. You know, like the quarter slot guy. He's the website sure. guy. He's a webmaster. Jesus 202, strictly for Goyim. Foreskin 102. And boy, there's a lot of Goyim, let me tell you that, and a lot of foreskin. You could wrap, you know something? You could wrap the earth in all the foreskin on the planet. Do you, do you ever think could. of that? Uh, no, I don't. Well, I'll start thinking about no, it now. No. Biscuits and gravy 80. Spam 54. Of course, you'd probably have an oxygen mask because you wouldn't want, to, wouldn't want to inhale all that smegma all the time. Oh, my uh -huh, God. Right. Spam 54. Pork and beans 43. Ham sandwich 38. Mike Huckleberry Hound 36. And lentil soup 49. Oh, come on. They're confusing yentl with lentil, I think. And maybe yentl green. Remember yentl green? Yeah. Where the hell is that? There it is. Speaking of the dolphins, our Dave Joseph talked to yentl green. <laughs> yentl green. Oh, my God. Talk about too many goyim. Okay, what's this fax now? Oh, no! I don't know if this is good news or bad news. Uh, End of an Era by Joni Fleischman in your Herald. Your Herald, not my Herald. Protect ourselves. Uh, give me a chance to recruit some new men. No. I don't want to give Barzini an excuse to start fighting. Mike, you're wrong. Don Corleone, you once said that the day would come when Tessio and me could form our own family. Till today, I would never think of it. Long time WPLG, ABC 10 anchor Dwight Lauderdale, a fixture on South Florida TV since 1974, is expected to announce his retirement Monday on the 11 p.m. news. His contract expires June 1st, and the talk is he's going to leave Channel 10 in late May. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How are we going to survive without Dwight? With or without the mustache. Lauderdale, 56, joined WPLG in 1976 after two years of reporting at WCKT, which is now Channel 7 WSVN. I, I don't remember that at all. He became a main anchor in 1986, sharing the spotlight with Ann Bishop. You fairy. That big old dead bull like Ann Bishop until her retirement in 95. She died in 97. Her anchors at 6 11 p.m. He anchors with the Lori Jennings. WPLG is airing a teaser featuring retired meteorologist Don... No. ...who left in November after 27 years. It shows Noah on a cell phone, waiting with fishing pool in hand, singing the praises of leisure life. No, I get up whenever I want, spend the whole day fishing. I don't have to wear makeup anymore. It's just great. Come on, buddy. You're not getting any younger, you know, he says. Who will be Jenny's new anchor? Tune in. Lauderdale will announce his replacement. Odds are on weekend anchor Charles Perez. Oh, no. You fairy. Lauderdale makes in the high six figures. Wife Minnie, 58, is a real estate agent with Esslinger, Wooten, Maxwell. As for fishing, it says, Joni says, not his thing. I don't see too many black guys into fishing, are they? Yeah, what are you talking about? I see them all the time. They are? On the canals? Uh, Got them white buckets and pickle I'm buckets. I'm talking about real fishing, not in the canals with an old cane pole. Thank you, Papa. I'm happy for you. Is that unreal fishing? I'm happy fishing? for you, Carlo. What? Is that unreal My fishing? Stuff. Why am I out? You're not a wartime consigliere, Tom. Things may get rough with the move we're trying. Tom, I advise Michael. I advise Michael. I never thought you were bad consigliere. I thought. Santino, rest in peace, was a bad guy. Rest in peace. Michael has all my confidence, as, as you do. But uh, there are reasons why he must have no Maybe I could help. Now. You're out, Tom. Maybe I could help. You're out, Tom. <laughs> it's it like a sickness. So it's like a disease, isn't it? I know. 
Wow. And you just keep replaying it in your mind over no. and over. What is it about this movie? What is it? It's perfect. Wow. That's not perfect. Sure it is. The first two? There's There's perfect? anything wrong with them, yeah. Considering all the swill that Hollywood cranks out every year. It's nice okay. to see something that there's nothing wrong with. That's like WQAM. We're perfect. <laughs> Just ask uh, that, that last rejoin. Are we going to have that all day long? Is that so the sorry. Uh, that was... Uh... I guess I should have saw that. That was operator error. That was Josh Cordes who just did that. Okay? Hey, listen, I didn't oh, put it in God, there. If we I didn't put it Chris in the video today, we wouldn't have had to hey, listen to all that crap. Listen. You're not supposed to play those on this show. This is not a sports show. I, I know you it. forgot. Listen, I get it, okay? I, it, you, I didn't put it in the it. bin, okay? I just uh, I happen to play it. Won't happen again. What do you mean you happen to play it? Just to piss me off? Again? No, I'm saying I saw O promo. I forgot to. I, I, you know, I haven't done this in a while. I forgot to hit O rejoin. Yeah. I thought O promo. Oh. Uh, Oh, no, that's what I kept thinking. It just goes on and on and on and on. You could just plot from it, man. You could pass out from exhaustion just praying for it to be over already. Just shut him up. Stick your foot in his puss. God. The biggest names. The best talent. The best talent. The best talent. The best leader. You straightened my brother out. He was making cocktail waitresses two at a time. Players couldn't get a drink at the table. What's wrong with you? I leave tomorrow. I leave for New York tomorrow. Think about a price. Think about a price. Do you know who I am? I'm Mo Green. I made my bones when you were going out with cheerleaders. Suck it in and hold it. From Washington, this week... With ABC News Chief Washington Correspondent, George Stephanopoulos. Senator Hillary Clinton, good morning, Senator. Good morning, George. We need to get back to doing what Americans do best. I will do everything I can to get laid as quickly as possible. Every single day. You know, my position has been consistent. I mean, I had the same position for years, upside down and backwards. And I still have the scars to show from that exercise. <laughs> We're just about out of time. My bottom. Is that true? The behind. Senator, thanks very thanks. much. Thanks. Great to see you. Ever. Ever. Don't ever take time. What the hell is that? Oh, that's on the TV. <laughs> Woo! They sure caught me off guard on that one. They cut right in with the promo, you know. They they caught they uh, surprised the homo with one of them promos, just kind of like Josh Cordes surprised us with that long big O promo uh, on the break before this last one. It was there a promo on, for the homo. On and on, my God, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. So sorry, you ought to be. He said he won't play that promo no mo homo. Yeah, don't play that promo no mo. Oh. I couldn't hear it again, but you know what? I don't want. I don't want to hear it. Okay, let's take a look at the schedule today. It's like pristine, looks like to me. Looks pristine to this old queen. I think I'm going to build it up another Joyce, which I don't know how that's possible. Really? Uh, Jack show, two to four. That, that should do it. That easily could do it for me. Makes me want to Joyce my brains out. Mad Dog, four to seven. Dolphins All Assets with John Litter and Troy Drayton, seven to nine. That's, uh, that's that two-hour nightly tune-out to give you a chance to watch the nightly news and digest your dinner. Oh, I'm going to go do a Joyce right now. And the DA show, nine really? to nine. I am. Nature's calling, baby. Big time. Uh, oh, my God. A year after his Academy Awards dream went up in smoke, Eddie Murphy has not just one consolation prize, but three. Three Razzie Awards as Worst Actor, Worst Supporting Actor, and Worst Supporting Actress for the comedy Norbit. The fourth acting dishonor announced at Saturday's Golden Raspberry Awards went to Lindsay Lohan, who actually was voted the two, not just one, but two Worst Actress trophies for the thriller I Know Who Killed Me, the Worst Picture winner which he played dual roles. So she got two Worst Actress Awards. Nice going, Lindsay. <laughs> I Know Who Killed Me set a new Razzie's record with eight awards, including Worst Screen Couple for Lohan in her double role. Topping the previous record of seven Razzie's for both Showgirls and Battlefield Earth, I Know Who Killed Me also won for Worst Director, Chris Cyberston. Who's that? Screenplay, Jeff Hammond, horror movie and remake or ripoff, Razzie's organizers viewed it as a cross between torture flicks such as Saw and a twisted uptake of the Patty Duke show. Up Uptake. <laughs> It's that Joyce that's building up in my colon that's causing me to, like, read a little bit cockeyed. Caca. With his latest exercise in multiple roles, Murphy was the first person ever to win three acting Razzies in one year. He won his worst actor for the geeky title role, supporting actress as his tubby shrewish wife, and supporting actor as a stereotyped Asian man. I think I'm going to go do that Joyce right now. So you've got some, uh, really? some crap? 
<laughs> yeah, but I got rid of it before the show. No, I so did I, but I'm not talking about that kind of crap. I'm just talking about some, you know, to fill in. Yeah, yeah. Some awards watchers say Norbert cost Murphy an Oscar, landing him in theater shortly. In fact, you could talk about uh, what's his name's girlfriend there, his ex girlfriend, about uh, his Russian girlfriend, what she's doing these days. Josh? Yeah. She's doing him. I, I was with her last night. Yeah. You're back with her again? Uh, oh, I'm back with her with no commitment. So, in other words, it's one of those on again, off again, in, in and out again. It's a what it is. I'm just living the dream, is. man. That's I'm, right. I'm just living the dream. Well, what does that mean? Meaning, uh, you know, we still sex each other, but there's no commitment there. You're still screwing her brains out, but there's, but it's like uh, she right, leaves afterwards. Now. It's like an it's open relationship. Better. Is that what you want to say? It's an open relationship. Yeah, she leaves after, which, it, which to me, that's better. Well, that's good. Get her out of there. You know, get it over with and uh, say, hey, have a nice night and get out of here, bitch. That, that's the way to do it. Now that sounds bad. Do you say that? Get out of here, bitch? Not in a while. Do you have said that? Yes, I have. Okay, well, listen, I'll be back, George, in a couple minutes. All right. Wow. I'm not joking. It's just the one that, you know, you know how nature is, man. It's God working. When it calls, you've got to answer the call. Wow. I got stuff I could play, but we won't. We could, got Josh Cordes here. We could talk about the weekend. Mine was all contentious. I probably shouldn't go into that. I had a great weekend. It was just, I mean, it was, it was good and all, but there was just something like, uh, and you, you know, because you got women in your life, it's just uh, everything that came out of your mouth must have been the wrong way, even though, uh, you know, you didn't think you were saying anything a certain way. I want to put you, you know? in a predicament. <coughs> I want to put you in a predicament that all right. my friend was in, and I want to know what you do in this situation. That sounds great. I love predicaments. We were at a bar. You better love them if you're married. And <laughs> we were at a bar, and, and a, yes. how do I say this? An extremely large woman. All right. Came up to a friend of mine. All right. And said, I would love to have your number. Okay. Now, what do you do, George? I want to know what you do in this situation. I say no thank you. I well, say we'll no. find out because I'm back. Oh, that was quick. Are you are you choicing me? No, i I done my uh, duty. Look, I take longer to no wipe way. than you were just... No, no way. No. Yes, wait. You must have left no. a trail. No. I didn't leave any trail, and uh, everything is trail. just fine. Okay? Seriously. I'm, you, you know me. That's one of my uh, specialties. Yeah, but that's, that was a record. What I, was that, 30 I would call seconds? the Guinness Book of World Records if you really just <laughs> that. Look, I take longer than that to fart. Well, guess what? I didn't do that either. I guess not. Well, there was, you know, enough pressure. I don't want to get into a whole bunch of excretory activity, okay, because then Joyce will get all upset. How many times did you wipe? Joe will call in David Sampson, and he'll get all bent out of shape. Did you even wipe? Yes, of course did I even. Well, what's wrong with you? You man? weren't gone long I'm enough gross. to wipe once. God, are you gross. Not me. Because I take time to wipe. Now, is this when Kay comes That's to the... Yeah, there she is. Oh, no, it's not when she comes to us. See where he is. Oh, my He's already back. This weekend, we'll go out. We'll go to the city. We'll see if she... I'll tell you one thing, though. I can, I can sniff the aroma all the way from the other room, Roy. It's going to put me in a coma. Follow me. Like a vapor trail. Michael, Michael, your sister wants to ask you something. And you know what? I think that may not be the end, but uh, it'll, the rest will wait till the next break. Wow. But, you know, I told you I had a very traumatic weekend, you know, and sometimes I just twist you, twisted tissues. Right? Right. Sometimes that does it. I hate the wrong thing tonight. Oh, I say, but the hell's you eat tonight? I got twisted fifties. By the way, how's that poll coming on this? What's something that's strictly for Goyim? And I realize that a lot of the Goyim, they don't understand what that means. Too bad. If you don't speak Yiddish, you're lost on this show. Get some help. Take a refresher course. 593 vote. Which of these is strictly for Goyim? Jesus, 212. Foreskin, 106. Biscuits and gravy, 83. It's good for you, Bob. Spam, 56. My <laughs> yeah, I wonder if the Godfather ever ate biscuits and gravy. I sure doubt it. Span 56, Mike Huckabee 44, Pork and Beans 44. Very happy. That's good. Ham Sandwich 39 and Little Soup 12. I keep going over this Bassini business. You know, I don't think we've ever been on the air when The Godfather was uh, on TV at the same time, live, you know. I mean, not live, but you know what I mean. Right. When it was showing on cable. And you uh, weren't we uh, fortunate to hear that part where he was he was making waitresses two at a time. Yeah. This censorship oh. that's going on now, even on cable stuff, even on stuff that you people pay to come in on a wire into your home, and the government's still and they're all shaking in their boots. Oh, we're going to get fined by the FCC. Oh. God, what a country, man. 
I'm one of those people old enough to be fortunate enough to remember when we actually had a little bit of freedom of speech. Not complete, but at least some of it. Now, nada. Like that thing in Alabama where they uh, took the damn uh, 60 minute segment off the air because they didn't like it. They could have carried it, but you know what? They didn't want to. God. Now, what's this thing? Oh, yeah, I heard about this on the radio here. I don't want to talk about the Marlins. Uh, where did this come from? Oh, it's from the Herald. So one of our listeners thought I wanted to talk about the big bellies for the uh, first male all-obese cheerleading squad. I don't know who could be on that. <laughs> the Beast. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't he be perfect for that? He could be the captain. Yeah, he could be the ringleader. Oh, get out of here. I'm not promoting anything for the Marlins, okay? The Marlins can kiss my fat old hairy smelly ass, all right? Right now would be a good time. Get a, get a whiff of the aroma, Donald Sampson. Oh, the Marlins, I heard Joe carrying on about, you know what, well, he, he uh, you know, I like Joe a lot, but he sucks up to any of the sports entities, man. He just kisses their ass. Kissy, 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 kissy. The idea that one penny of uh, tax money is going to go to build them a stadium. We've been through this for years through all the different regimes. John Henry was meh, meh, like that. Oh, and speaking of that, guess what? I got a very conciliatory and very nice message from my Baldy from Chicken Neck. Oh, good. Over the weekend. Everything's just fine, and they're taking care of him oh, and getting him caught up. And... Oh, God. Thank God. Now I'm yeah. going to go have to take a choice. No, I'm going to have to go back out there of and just, uh, fall, 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 flush Careful. myself Careful. down the thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> fall in. All right. The winner was your time that, that you would be the one to hold the strings. Senator, Senator Corleone. Governor Corleone. Governor Corleone. Another peasant of honor. Another person person right. Whatever that is. I don't really even know what that we is. Went another person. It. What Can is it? Explain it to you. Literally, it means uh, it means uh, ninety pounds. In other words, a big shot, but sarcastically. Another big shot. Another heavy weight, mm -hmm. but sarcastic because it's ninety peasant pounds. Peasant Avante. I wonder if the paparazzi right. follow the peasant Avante. I'm sure. Some award watchers say Norbit cost Murphy an Oscar landing him in theaters shortly before last year's ceremony and potentially displeasing enough Academy voters that the balloting went against him for Dreamgirls, for which he'd been the supporting actor favorite. Murphy lost the Oscars to Alan Arkin for Little Miss Sunshine. Part of why the Razzies exist is to make fun of the cat takes itself too seriously, said Razzies founder John Wilson. If you had tried to make something certain to offend the average 90-year-old Academy voter, I don't think you could have done a better job than the foul-mouthed, physically ugly, emotionally ugly movie he unleashed on the world. The Razzie ceremony at a magic shop in Santa Monica came the day before Sunday's Oscars, where Norbert ironically was set up for the best makeup prize against La Vian Rose and Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Michael Rizzi, would you be baptized? In nomine Patris? Well, at least smear a little water on his head, okay? All those lottery players holding crumpled, worthless Mega Million tickets can take some consolation. A couple of won the $270 million jackpot are just too nice to resent, they say. You know who they are. Robert and Tanya Harris matched all five numbers plus the Mega Ball on Friday Night Strong, the only one, the only such ticket in the multi-state game. They live in Portal, Georgia. Oh, my God. What kind of a place could that be? Robert Harris wearing a pink shirt and dark sunglasses. You fairy. As he talked about his good fortune in front of his home with his family Saturday, said he and his wife don't normally even play the lottery. That's the way it always is. But I got the idea, even after the fact. Oh, we're back up. We're back up now. Oh, hallelujah. We're back up streaming. I got the green lights. And pretty soon it's going to say down 45,000 uh, times. And didn't we start the show? I wasn't going to mention it on the air because sometimes it's, it's even too embarrassing for me. But we're, didn't we start the air with uh, Josh telling me, oh, well, the audio vault is down and they're going to come in like two minutes before the show and fix it, which I guess they did. Yeah, I guess so. We're having a technical nightmare, and you don't think it's because it's Monday, the day after another one of those uh, weekends, you know, when everybody comes in and plays house with our equipment, with everybody's equipment? Yeah, I all the that. little children come in and they play games. Oh, well, let's play radio, and they potchkey around with this button, and they screw around with that one, and they punch it and kick it and twang it and uh, clang it. <laughs> yeah, and every Monday morning it's the same thing. Oh, gee, nothing works. I huh, can't imagine why. The worst news in history: Ralph Nader, that craggy old pompous piece of turd, is launching a third-party campaign for president. You know how many people are going to vote for him this time? I guarantee you. Yeah. Uh huh. Is launching a third party campaign for president. You know how many people are going to vote for him this time? I guarantee you. Yeah. Uh huh. 
The consumer advocate made the announcement Sunday on NBC's Eat the Press. He says most Americans are disenchanted with Democratic and Republican parties and that none of the presidential contenders are addressing ways to send corporate crime and Pentagon waste and promote labor rights. I think there's one thing we need to stem, and that's him. Put a lid on him already, okay? Jesus, God. Get out of here, Brandon. Get, yeah, get that stream working. Stream this. Go away. Quit bugging me. Like, like I'm going to press a switch and do something. That supposedly is back up there, I guess. Although now it says 401 on the right side, so maybe it's not. I don't know. It's working again. You sure now? Who told you that? Eric. Nader also ran as a third-party candidate in 2000 and 2004 presidential elections. He just won't go away. A man with an ego that is so out of control, he won't get the message, you know. He's still loathed by many Democrats, including me, who call him a spoiler and claim his candidacy in 2000 caused the party the election by siphoning votes away from Al Gore in a razor-thin contest in Florida. It's not like an opinion. It's a fact. It's a fact. I mean, you were just going to kill him. And you stood godfather to our baby. You lousy, cold-hearted bastard. I don't know how many men he had killed with the collar. Read the papers, read the papers. That's your husband. That's your husband. According to a Wall Street Journal report, Democratic presidential candidate Barack Obama recently said that Nader's plans don't concern him. I think the job of the Democratic Party is to be so compelling that a few percentage points of the vote to going to another candidate isn't going to make any difference, he said in Ohio Saturday. The Wall Street Journal article continued to Obama responded to criticism from Nader, who suggested that the Democratic hopeful lacks substance by noting that Nader has reached out to his campaign. My sense is that Mr. Nader is somebody who, if you don't listen and adopt all of his policies, thinks you're not substantive, Obama said, before praising Nader as heroic and a singular figure in American politics. A silly, old, egotistical, pompous ass. That's Ralph Nader. And I'm going to tell you, just like I told you in 2000 and 2004, anybody who votes for him will we'll track you down and shoot your ass right on the spot. We'll get uh, Luca Brasi. Michael, is it true? <laughs> Don't ask me about my business, King. Is it true? Don't ask Don't me about my business. Ask me about my business. No. I mean... Just this one time. Why don't you ask me about my business? Come on. Come on, Al. Put it out. He's got to put out the faggot. Just one time. This one time, I'll let you ask me about my affairs. Is it true, Michael? No. Is it true? No. Listen to the way he says it. No. <laughs> no. Oh. A real Italian, no, no. 26 after all, in fact, there was olive oil squirting out of his ears when he said that. Oh, you can't say that. I just did. Show me yours. I'll show you mine. Tom Cruise, did you read in the ingredients that Boar's Light is made from Rocky Mountain spring water? When I read it, I, you know, I just went, this is it. This is exactly it. Well, well, what would you say to someone who doesn't know where to buy Boar's Light? You better know it. You better know it. And if you don't... If I don't know, then what? You know, go and learn it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, Tom Cruise, we call a six-pack an SP. Have you ever seen one? So, like, have you met an SP? <laughs> <laughs> wow, SPs, like, they'll just read about those in the history books, you know? We think you should buy everyone in here a cold boar's light. Can you do that? I do what I can, and I do it. The way I do everything. <laughs> There's nothing hard to wait for me. It's just. Oh, well, guess what? What? Godfather 2, baby. Yeah, I hear it. Your Godfather was born Vito Andolini in the town of Corleone, Sicily, and they just took the. Uh, it just took the script off the screen. Damn it. Don't you when that happens? Yeah, whatever. You notice in Italy, they're, they're always uh, clanging and banging on drums and on cymbals and a lot no, of noise. I didn't know that. Bong. Okay.
Lots of loud horns. A lot of blowing on horns, too. Anyway, it's 11.33, 27 to Luna QAM on a really uh, spastic kind of a Monday. Boy, I didn't expect this today. What? Did you? You expect a spastic day? Is it, is it spastic? Well, technically it is. Although we're streaming, baby, we're streaming. Ow! All right. What more could you want? Money. Police in the Chicago suburbs, speaking of money, say the Internal Revenue Service has told a seven-year-old boy he owes back taxes on $60,000 because somebody else has been using the youngster's identity to collect wages and unemployment benefits. Leave it to the IRS to do a really brilliant thing, right? In fact, let's hang the seven-year-old kid. Officers in suburban Carpentersville said Friday the second grader's identity has been in use by somebody else since 2001. Detectives have filed a felony identity theft charge against 29-year-old Cirillo Centeno of Streamwood, Illinois. They accused Centeno of using the boy's personal information to collect more than $60,000 in pay and services while working three jobs. Well, at least he was industrious. He was working three jobs. Right. They say he's also used the boy's ID to buy a truck, pay bills, and even collect unemployment benefits. Well, good for you there, Cirillo. Hang the kid and then they'll let him go, you know, whatever. Crazy. Oh, here comes uh, Mama, the first Mama Corleone. Whatever her name is. Or Angelina. That's right. Facciamo le mani, Don Ciccio. And Don Ciccio, who even back in the day had bad hearing. And never moved. He always sat in that chair with his big fat ass. Yeah, I I wish he would have moved one, one day. What? I wish he would have moved one day. Frank Rich writes, The audacity of hopelessness. It's way too long for me to read now. Way too long. So I'll read Maureen Dodd's column from the New York Times. Kenneth Les Macho. She says, If this is truly the decline and fall of the Clinton Empire, it's marked by one freaky stroke of bad luck and one striking historical irony. How likely is it that a woman who finally unfetters herself from one superstar then finds herself eclipsed by another one? And when historians trace how her inevitability is solved, they'll surely note this paradox. The first serious female candidate for president was rejected by voters drawn to the more feminine management style of her male rival. The bullying in Velocosity, the Bush administration, had left many Americans exhausted and yearning for a more nurturing and inclusive style. Sixteen years of politicians in Washington clashing in epic, if not always essential, battle through culture wars, the right-wing war against the Clintons, the war without end on terror, and the war with no end in sight in Iraq, have spotted a desire for peace and pragmatism. Hillary was so busy trying to prove she could be one of the boys, getting on the Armed Services Committee, voting to let W go to war in Iraq, strong army supporters and donors, and trying to out macho Obama, that she only belatedly realized that many Democratic and independent voters, especially women, were eager to move from hard power locker room tactics to a soft power sewing circle approach. Less towel snapping and more towel color coordinating, less steroids and more sensitivity. Business schools have begun teaching the value of a less autocratic leadership style with the emphasis on behavior women excel at, reading emotions and social interactions, making eye contact, and expressing empathy. At the University of Texas on Thursday morning, Obama proved that he was not a cowboy in overdrive like W when he demurred at throwing a spiral because his past might not be as good as Longhorn Stars. After so many years when W and Cheney stomped on the world and the world glared back, many Americans would like to see their government focus more on those staples of female fiction, relationships, and conversation. A first in Austin, Hillary did not channel Jane Austen. She tried once more to cast Obama as a weak sister on his willingness to talk to Raul Castro. Obama tapped into his inner chick and turned the other cheek. To cheers, he said, I think it's important for us in undoing the damage that's been done over the last seven years for the president to be willing to take that extra step. Hillary tried to rough up Obama on copying his pal's language, even as she copied her husband's line from 1992. The hits that I took in this election are nothing compared to the hits that the people in this state and this country are taking every day of their lives under this administration. While Obama looked at her warily, even fearfully, Hillary suddenly switched to her feminine side. Getting New Hampshire misty, she said she was absolutely honored to be there with him, and that whatever happens, we're going to be fine. Her campaign defended the originality of the John Edwards sentiment, sentiment saying it even been expressed by the likes of Lindsay Lohan. The press, hailed, <laughs> the press hailed the moment as heartfelt, but it was simply Hillary's calculated attempt to woo women and protect her future in the party by seeming more collegial. She is furious that the Chicago kid got in the picture. For my sister, my daughter flipped from muscular to tremulous, let everyone, left everyone confused. Many characterized her emulation of empathy as elegiac and submissive. But she dispelled that Friday morning when she told Evan Smith, editor of the Texas Monthly, that she'll push for Florida and Michigan delegates to be seated despite her promise, not for herself, mind you, but for them. It's in large measure because both the voters and elected officials in Michigan and Florida feel so strongly about this, she said. Among her other cascading woes, it turns out that Hillary is not able to manage her political family's money. 
Like a prudent housekeeper, Obama spent the cash he raised, including from his continuing relationships with small donors, far more shrewdly on ads rather than on himself. Hillary Land spent like a hedge fund manager in a flat screen TV store. Her campaign attempted to show omnipotence by lavishing a fortune on the take-no-prisoner strategists Howard Wolfson and Mark Penn on having the best of everything from the set decoration at events to four-season rooms. In January alone, they spent $11,000 on pizza, $1,200 on Dunkin' Donuts, and $95,000 plus at Des Moines' Hy-Vee grocery store for get-out-the-vote sandwich platters. But total domination in the snack area does not cut the mustard. Writes Maureen. Cute. Doesn't cut the mustard. Well, there's poor uh, little uh, Vito Andolini coming to America, uh, to Ellis Island. And after checking for, like, lice and uh, EDGBs and stuff like that. Vito Andolini. Checking his eyebrows. Checking out his... Oh, but that goes. Yeah. All these things. It's a little bit slow starting this Godfather, too, you know? Yeah, that's all right. Oh, it only goes on for like seven hours. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to like intersperse in the jerk show and Mad Dog Show. We're going to have like more dialogue from The Godfather. And from two to four, believe me, could only be an improvement. The biggest names. The best talent. This is Neil Rogers. Sports Radio 560 QAM. The sports leader.